what is a brand after all? A brand is what other people think. Your brand is not what you say it is. It is not your logo or your copy or your website or your Instagram grid. All of those things are just wishes that you make. When you rebrand, you are wishing out loud, hoping out loud that people see you in a new way. Everything you create in the branding process and afterwards is designed to make your wishes come true. To build or be a brand is to make it your job to care what other people think. Welcome to Marketing Muckraking, the show that asks not simply what brand culture can do for us, but what it's doing to us. With your host, creative director and brand strategist gone wild, Rachel K. Albers, making fun of business and making business fun. This is the show for rebels, revolutionaries, and renegades who run businesses that burn the rule book. If you're sick of business podcasts that have all the answers, well, I got nothing but questions. Let's go. Episode 19, The Not-So-Subtle Art of Caring What Other People Think. I get asked a lot, how do you do what you do, say what you say, act how you act, and not care what other people think? LOL, am I right? Oh, I care. I care a lot. I care too much. I host imaginary debates when somebody unfollows me on Instagram over the merits of the meme I just shared. I blast Katy Perry's roar unironically on the highway and pretend that my haters are watching it on an IMAX screen. I reread old blog posts from my dad's point of view and answer back when he says, why did you write LOL in an essay, Rach? What, what are you doing saying LOL on your podcast? Not very professional. In my day, okay. Yet, ultimately, I feel like not caring what others think is a trap set up by the good vibes only industrial complex to keep us forever carrying our way to more coaching packages, more self-help books, more bottomless mimosa brunches that make us buzz with the temporary glow of Sunday afternoon champagne bubbles so we can wake up on Monday morning in a new and improved way, now featuring headache, and start the process all over again. Who invented this pressure to summit Mount I don't give a fuck? Was it Meryl Streep? Because it's her face and her Instagram-worthy quotable that pops up in Google image search when I look. The minute you start caring about what other people think is the minute you stop being yourself, Meryl Streep, and every inspirational quote site ever. This quote has also been attributed to Will Smith, Kendrick Lamar, and Rachel Hollis, of course, who has no fewer than five videos and a whole book on the concept, LOL again, deal with it, dad. An exhaustive search for its origin led me down a rabbit hole of... 4,230,000,000 Google results for this concept. But I cannot find any proof of when or if Streep ever said this. Yet in my search, the scam historian in me couldn't help but see that caring about what other people think is a highly marketable problem to have. Streep might get the cred, but this concept goes back to the Stoics, who were kind of like the Tony Robbins of the Greek and Roman times, because they believed in focusing on the stuff in one's control and just forgetting the rest. One of the most famous Stoic philosophers, Epictetus, said, The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself, which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control? Where then do I look for good and evil, not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own? And his ideas became the foundation of the modern self-help movement. As I learned from the subtle art of not giving a fuck's Mark Manson, who is often confused with the Stoic, but he aligns more with existentialism, The book, Self-Help, was written by Samuel Smiles in 1859 based on his idea that God helps those who help themselves. Reformed growth hackers like Ryan Holiday have repopularized Stoicism with an Instagram sheen in his books like Courage is Calling and The Obstacle is the Way. And certainly there is much to be learned from the Stoics. 
They may have walked so Tiny Tony could run straight into the arms of Dean Graciosi, but they also believed that true happiness was found in living a virtuous life through the ongoing pursuit of wisdom, justice, courage, moderation. But as Manson points out, when it comes to Stoic views on detachment, only focusing on what we can control is not only impossible, it's irresponsible. Detachment as a virtue leads to a way of thinking that tells us it's okay to disengage with the problems of the world or that we are wrong for hurting because we can't control the systemic stuff. But this also explains why Stoicism is so hot right now and how its tenets bleed into the sermons of Tiny Tony and his acolytes who are obsessed with us washing our faces and not apologizing. Leaders like Tony Robbins and Rachel Hollis have adapted Stoic philosophies to capitalism, rebranding these ancient concepts as self-accountability and emotional mastery, all so that we can be successful in monetary terms, or they can't, at least, at our expense. No big deal, it's fine. (laughs) I can't forget that Ryan Holiday's first book was Trust Me, I'm Lying, Confessions of a Media Manipulator, all about how he exploited the media for clients like Tucker Max and, oh, you guessed it, Tony Robbins. The book is considered a playbook for spotting media manipulators and copying their methods, if you must, the book jacket proclaims. But it also shows how good Holiday is at tapping into the zeitgeist for monetary gain. And as my 4,230,000,000 Google results on caring about what other people think affirm, there is nothing more zeitgeisty than caring deeply about not caring deeply, and then telling everyone about it in multiple books, videos, blog posts. Unlike the Stoics, we live in a time where caring what others think isn't just an ethical dilemma, it's a matter of economic survival. In the age of the personal brand and the creator economy, what other people think about you quite literally pays the bills. How you are perceived by others can land or lose you a job, a sale, a client, a sponsorship, a book deal. Not caring is a privilege afforded to fewer and fewer in the internet age, and it's typically a privilege enjoyed by folks with existing wealth and power. Uh, Admittedly, I exist on the extreme end of that spectrum. My job, branding, is literally the business of shaping perception. What is a brand, after all? A brand is what other people think. Your brand is not what you say it is. It is not your logo or your copy or your website or your Instagram grid. All of those things are just wishes that you make. When you rebrand, you are wishing out loud, hoping out loud that people see you in a new way. Everything you create in the branding process and afterwards is designed to make your wishes come true. Your brand is what people remember about you based on a complicated mess of factors, what they've experienced, felt, heard, read, seen, that ultimately becomes a paint-splattered memory that people like me neatly fold up into a five-letter word. So the art of branding contradicts stoicism, which directs us to detach from what others think. To build or be a brand is to make it your job to care what other people think. Do I celebrate this? Of course not. I cry about it in the shower. I cry and I wash my face and I cry some more because as much as I would love to lather myself in stoicism and call it a day, I ultimately believe that we can't easily opt out of this branded age simply because it sucks to care not only is to be human, but there is this added complication of how capitalism forces us to care. Bills, am I right? There is no way to stop caring or considering what other people think of us and still be employed or employable. But beyond that, there is no way to stop caring or considering what other people think and also fight for a better world or another way. It is people who build and reinforce systems. And they do that based on what they think. So even if I were to leave the world of branding behind as an activist and a compassionate human being, I would still be in the business of caring what other people think. Human beings don't live in our own private worlds, governed only by our own virtues. We are, by our very nature, interconnected, interdependent, 
to care and consider what other people think is part of peaceful coexistence. So the question for me then becomes less about how do I care less what other people think and instead about how do I live my life in a way that I can care for myself and other people more and more. So yeah, this probably means fewer fights with my dad or my Instagram unfollowers in my own brain. Doing that will not help me care for myself or others more and more. But at the same time, those imaginary conflicts are instructive. They help me better understand what I do care about. My dad and I once had a screaming match about the merits of capitalism that I still find myself replaying in my head during a good shower sob sesh. A stoic would tell me to let it go. Maybe after I give Tiny Tony 5K to walk across some coals. Huh? Is there a digital version of that that I can do on demand? After all these years, I still care what he thinks, damn it. And I probably always will. But... As I reflect on how caring so much for so long has impacted me, I realize I'm in no hurry to detach, mostly because caring what he thinks or what he thought has guided me towards the books and thinkers and movements that align my life's work with the world I want to build in capitalism's place. And this is not solitary work. It is something that must be done in the collective. And can you imagine a movement or a world comprised entirely of people who don't care what anyone else thinks? The paradox is I think we're already living in it to some extent. And I don't think it's working out for us. Yeah, I care what other people think. And I care about my mission, my values, my sense of virtue to bring it back to the Stoics more. I wonder what Meryl Streep would have to say about that. (laughs) What do you think? If you want more marketing muckraking and brand strategy gone wild, I invite you to subscribe to this show. And if you enjoyed it, leave me a review. That really helps me out. If you hated it, please send it to your enemies. They sound like good people. You can go to rachelkalbers.com slash subscribe to get these updates in your inbox. And because this show is self-sponsored, if you wanted to support my work, you can go to buymearobe.com. That's where the magic happens. In the meantime, remember, it's not the age of the niche. It's the age of the wildcard bitch. See you on the internet.